Hello Revit enthusiasts, this is Kurt Eggley once again with Synergis Engineering Design Solutions. This is part two of a two-part session on cost summation using Revit. I'm using Revit architecture. This could be Revit MEP or Revit structure if you desire. So what I did in part one was use the filing cabinet that you're seeing there, which is an element as a whole. And then I used as an example a more complex uh, variety, which is a nested family. So the cost parameter in a family's type can be used on the element as a whole, like we saw with the filing cabinet, which can be totaled in the itemized schedule you're seeing off to the right. If a family hosts nested families, like the table and chairs, the nested family's cost parameter can be shared to the host family to quantify the nested family's cost parameter separately from the host family's cost parameter. Kind of a mouthful, huh? There's a third way that we can approach this, though, where um, we can draw on the materials themselves, where there's a cost parameter under the hood that can be pull, pulling cost information in the form of the material per square foot, per cubic foot, for example. So, like in this case, I'm going to draw in the column, footing, and foundation wall, which all use cast-in-place concrete which, you know, it's appearing in all of them, and then use a multi-category schedule to derive subtotals for each family type using a calculated value based off of a formula. Now, while Revit isn't specifically set up for estimating costs, it can be tailored. You just need to think through how you want to quantify the cost as you're working. So I, I wanted to do that, and then we'll do the complex wall type as a fourth flavor of approach here. So here's a wall, column, and footing, which are all seen as different types in the mind of Revit. So instead of just coming down to the cost parameter at that dialog we were just on a second ago, I can get inside the material, get to cast in place concrete, and under the identify tab, there's a cost underneath there. So we can put in a cost so much per cubic foot, so much for square foot, whatever you want to fill in uh, that makes sense for uh, what you're working with at the time. And instead of putting it in in this dialog, the type properties, cost row that's down a little farther on that, we put it into the material itself. Now instead of using a schedule and quantities button like that, we we'll use the next one down which is a material takeoff. Material takeoff, right? You can do individual categories. I'm going to use the multi-category one clear up at the top because, again, we got three different categories that are combined here. So from that, I can pull family, material name, material cost, material volume. You see how there's an area within this one when you're doing a material takeoff that has the word material, colon, and then name, URL, model that trails after it. That material cost that I just brought in, be aware, farther up in the list we used in part one, the cost field, but this time we're using the material cost field, which is where we actually filled in our values. There's a calculated value that we can do here as well. So I can say that I'd like this to be currency and then use a formula to derive it. Now, it has to be exact. You can type this in if you want, but you can use it to material colon space volume space slash one cubic foot times, and then go back in whatever lands in the material cost. And it'll help build the statement for you. So basically, we're trying to do a um, uh, change from cubic feet into cost in one motion. We do it like this formula there. And that'll be the total cost when it comes up. A brand new column will get created. Now we can filter on what's the, what is um, coming across and say that we only want it if it contains the words cast in place. Right? So the material, if you remember when we went to that dialog, it said cast in place concrete. By the way, this is case sensitive as well. So I say if it has cast in as a part of that, then make that part of the schedule and ignore everything else. Let's see what we got so far. The family that we asked for, 
material name, concrete cast in place. This is clear under the hood under that identify tab. We got the material cost, $13.64 like we put. We got the calculated volume, which is 180 cubic feet, 76 cubic feet. And then the new column that we created that did the uh, division and multiplication for us. Now I'm just going to format it like we did in part one. Some of these I'd like to be right justified, like the cost, the volume, the total cost. And once again, most of these I'm dealing with in currency, so I'll use US dollar symbol for the two cost columns and two decimal places trailing for cents. And then calculate a total all in one motion this time. So there you got it. The right justification, totals, and uh, right now we have them grouped together so the two basic walls are grouped together um, and foundation on its own and column on its own as well. So then for the total cost we can grand total that out as well. by using the sorting and grouping. So let's uh, group them together. They're already coming through by material name, um, but we got, you know, if it got more complex um, to where they would get broken apart, we could group them together in that fashion. So there's one of the two flavors in part two where we've used a multi-category material takeoff to get it done. So the next thing I'm going to do is to draw a complex wall over the top of that one. So instead of being just concrete, this one's going to be a material that you have on your computers too in Revit and exterior wall brick and CMU on metal stud. I'm going to get into the edit the structure and you can see this one has all sorts of stuff like masonry, a couple different kinds of masonry, metal stud, sheetrock, So I'll just draw that wall on top of the other. I already came in and gave quite a bit of uh, values to these already, so we wouldn't have to do every piece of um, plywood and the like, but I did leave a couple for you, so I'll go back in and, and add a value onto the brick as well, just like I did the concrete earlier. This time we're going to make a new material takeoff, but we'll use wall. So we can just say, the other one was multiple categories because they were in uh, foundation wall and column. This time it's just a wall, and I can grab the material name, material cost, the area in this case because we care about square foot instead of cubic feet. Your choice. Remember there's the cost. Don't use that one. Use material cost in this case. And then we can have another total. And this is currency again and we build another statement using the button off to the right there. Or we say the area, space, slash, space, one, space, SF, space, with little asterisks for times, material cost field. If you do hand type that in, make sure that you get it case sensitive, you get it exactly as it's spelled there. And the justification, we'll want that to be right as well, and dollar signs. right justified for the area and the total cost right justified plus we'll want the dollar symbol and two decimal places out and let's calculate a total on that and we should be good to go so there's a breakdown 
of which we can change the the headings on these two just because material cost is is the name of the field doesn't mean that we have to have it in that fashion so if I want to come back in and make changes I can go into the type property the property palette off to the left there get right at the fields and make more changes there for example with sorting and grouping I can get the material name all together and do a grand total of those the the footer piece and the blank line would break it up into smaller um, sections of like jip all together then a space then masonry brick and a space so right now though you see how it says concrete cast in place concrete because that was part of the wall we got a duplicate there because see where the first one on the multi-category material takeoff says basic wall there's a duplicate 120 cubic feet the other one is, is the same but it's just calculated differently and so from there we'd say that we want the material name if it does not contain cast in place so we sort that back out again it happened fast but you see how that just disappeared from it's alphabetically sorted there by material name so there would have been uh, the cast in place just below the air barrier and then the last thing we don't have any value for brick just wanted to make sure you knew how to do this once again we get underneath it, found brick masonry brick get under the identity identity tab fill in a cost say okay say okay it happens fast but if you look at the schedule again you'll see that it filled in eleven dollars and eight cents for the brick per square foot this time So we've approached this from three different manners, um, four I guess, if you want to look at it that way. In part one we did it by uh, discrete pieces. Part two here, we've done it with material takeoff. Instead of um, doing it on the elements themselves or the nested elements, nested families. So thanks so much. See you at the next one.